Hey everyone, welcome to Built by Bands. In today's guide, we're going to cover the chest press. Uh, so first, I'm just going to go over the, I'm going to list the fundamentals of this exercise and then we'll go into them by detail uh, so that you can ensure you're doing this correctly. So the first is your elbow position. Uh, with the chest press on X3, you got to really ensure that you flare your elbows out. Next is retracting your shoulders before you start the push so that your body is locked in position to ensure that you're activating the chest and protecting your shoulder joint. Uh, the next is uh, some typical things people experience. A lot of people experience their arms uh, fatiguing before their chest, and that's either due to lack of form or uh, just your arms are underdeveloped in relation to your chest. We're going to cover that one first uh, to just get out of the way. Uh, but the next couple things are the position of the band routed across your body to ensure that it's uh, even and that you're getting a good push on both sides of your body. Uh, the next is grip squeeze. So because it is a smaller position, uh, to really ensure that you're getting your chest, you got to squeeze the bar inward as you push out to really uh, flex the chest muscle hard. And then uh, the, the last but most important thing is to never lock out throughout the movement. Um, so let's start with the arms tiring first piece. Okay, so what typically happens, very similar to like the front squat where people's uh, bodies fatigue uh, like in their upper body or their core before their legs tire, um, that's just normal because your your legs are much stronger in general, um, you know, barring injuries or that kind of thing. Normally, people are much stronger in their legs than they are in their upper body. So it's only natural that as you're working through the front squat, your upper body fails first. It's the same thing with a chest press, right? Your chest is a lot stronger than your arms are almost always, okay? So again, barring any injuries or any kind of anomalies, the average person has a stronger chest than they do shoulders and arms, you know, biceps, triceps, all that kind of stuff. So if you're kind of just still starting out, maybe you've done 12 weeks, but you're still, you know, kind of just getting at a point where you're really starting to ramp up your, your the tension on your bands, your arms might fail first, and that's okay. You know, as long as you're doing your form correctly, and you're really pushing as hard as you can, that's gonna balance itself out. So it's not a need to panic. Um, and then kind of a, an additional piece on the arms tiring is your arms are gonna get tired because they are working here too, okay? Your chest isn't magically just pushing the bar forward with like a force field. Your arms have to do the work too. So even people who've been doing this a long time, even people way stronger than me, your arms will feel it at least a little bit, okay? Uh, so don't, don't over, uh, analyze that piece if you're kind of experiencing that it's okay just keep working hard and it's going to work itself out okay the other reason your arms would be failing first before your chest is your form needs improvement okay so uh, I'm going to cover the, the you know the, I'm going to give examples here about how to really ensure your form is spot on to get a lot out of this chest press here um, and if any of them are lacking you're you're probably not getting to where you need to be uh, on this exercise and you're kind of really cutting yourself short. So let's talk elbow position first. I'm gonna go through these without the, the band first just so you can clearly see everything without the band in the way, okay? So unlike a traditional bench press that you probably see in the gym with your typical you know, flat bench and bar, um, you know, your hand position is probably a little bit closer than what you're used to. Uh, I don't really wanna get into that one because it has been discussed plenty by the creator of the, of the system, um, but it is what it is, okay? The, the bar is what it is. So with this position, because of that, you really need to stick your elbows out, okay? If they're too far in, you're essentially just doing a tricep press here. In fact, this is actually one of the movements that you can do with X3. So it's very important that you keep those elbows out. You don't need to like stick them way up above, but if they need to be, you know, relatively close to in line with your shoulders so that as you push, it's forcing the chest to have to take the load as it extends, okay? If they're down, now it allows the chest to, to relax, and now you're basically just pushing out with your triceps and your forearms. So uh, that's the first you know, critical mistake people make is their elbow position. Okay, the second is your shoulders. So this is, this is dual purpose. One, it's to protect yourself, but two, it's to ensure that your chest, again, is being forced to take the, the brunt of the resistance and actually get fatigued. So, before I start, okay, see I'm like kind of slouched right now, you have to retract your shoulder blades back. So I'm flexing my traps, my uh, you know upper muscles in here in between my scapula. Uh, you have to pull them all back so that as you push out, 
your chest is taking the load. Okay, so from the side view, here I am relaxed. I flex them backwards and then begin to push out. Okay, that's very key. Combine that with your shoulder or your elbows. The elbow position combined with that shoulder retraction really ensures that you protect your joints and uh, really forces the chest to have to take the, the majority of the work here. And that's how you get that activation you're looking for. Um, so the band position, we'll, I'll cover that one after we go through the other two so you can really see them. The grip squeeze is next, okay? So as you're pushing out, shoulders retracted, elbows out, and as you're pushing, you're not just holding the bar in place. You wanna envision like you're trying to bend inwards. So if I was doing this with my hands, with both hands, as hard as I, as hard as I possibly can as I push out. So I'm not just gripping the bar, I'm actually squeezing inward like I'm trying to snap this thing in half. And then as you push out, you feel it in your chest. So like I have no band on the bar right now and I feel my chest really squeezing, okay? So like I can feel my chest working there. If you're doing that while you push out here uh, with the band on, you're really gonna get that activation very quickly. Um, just be sure that your wrist position is good, okay? You don't wanna be down or like this because one, you might hurt your wrist, but two, you might lose the bar either way, and uh, I think we've all seen the slingshot thing happen to someone. So um, make sure that your wrists, as you're squeezing, are in line with your upper arm, okay? They don't want to buckle, they need to stay in line so that your bone structure is supporting that, that motion and you're not going to hurt yourself, okay? If you really struggle with your wrist buckling, go get some straps, put those suckers on there, they will help support your wrist and help prevent you from dropping the bar. Um, that's totally fine. In my opinion, I, I would rather get a solid chest workout and not injure your wrist or, you know, have the bar slingshot into you. Um, and it helps to kind of remove that neural inhibition, right? If you're so worried about your wrist buckling, you're probably not pushing yourself to your absolute limit. So if that's you and it applies, get some, uh, straps. If it doesn't apply, great. Uh, you know, you're just working on some forearm stability. The last thing, uh, never locking out. Okay. So it is super important with the chest press especially that you never lock out on either end of the motion. So if I extend all the way so that my bone structure completely takes the force, I'm now allowing my muscles to rest. Okay, so you want about a 120 degree angle. Okay, so you can see my arms, there's a slight bend. Okay, this is locked. It's about right there. That's about the target zone you want to get to. Okay, so as you push out, it goes to right about there and you come back in. All right, and then the, tying into never locking out is never releasing the tension. When you come back, depending on what band you're using and, and your body shape, you know, you might lose tension here, or it might be all the way here. It just depends on where you're at. I'll talk about a couple of ways to make that work more effectively for you here at the end, but um, that's the other key, is to extend and then allow the motion back inward to stop where it's still under a significant amount of tension um, so that you're not shortchanging your effort. What will happen is as you fatigue through the zone, you know, you're not gonna be able to get to the end anymore. It will start feeling significantly harder and harder to keep that tension where it's at. So you're gonna really fatigue the muscle to a uh, pretty significant level of you know, exhaustion. And that's really gonna trigger growth uh, and strength increase that you need. Um, the chest press is probably the easiest example of that diminishing range of motion uh, with X3 that you get. So just keep that in mind, you know, it may at the start feel like you're really not getting a great range of motion yet, but as you really start to tire, you're going to really start working that lesser range of motion pretty dang hard at the end. So don't panic. Um, just ensure that you don't let that tension out. Okay, let's go back to the band positioning. I'm ready to put the band on. We'll do some, some live demonstration here. So as you can see, I've kind of pre-rigged mine with a band sleeve on it. I typically always do this for chest press simply because it makes it really easy to uh, keep the bands together around your body as you're kind of prepping to do this exercise. So just make sure it's centered, you know, so that it stays nice and even. And then when you go to throw this thing on, see it pretty much just falls right into place for me um, without too much trouble. So the uh, Important thing here is that it's even across your back, okay? You don't want it like crooked somehow. It needs to be nice and settled. And then um, you can see right here, it's kind of cutting my arm 
right below where my delt starts to connect to the rest of the arm. See that on the shoulder? So it needs to be the same on both sides. Okay, you don't want one shoulder like higher than the other because you're going to create imbalance. You want to keep it as uh, uniform as possible. So again, that's why I use the band sleeve. It just makes it super easy to get it in position. Um, for me, it, I don't even really have to think about it anymore. It, it just feels like it's in the right spot now because I've done it so much. So you'll, you'll start getting to that point. Um, if you're a lot bigger than I am, so I'm pretty small, um, you may have a really hard time getting the band position correctly. So there's a couple things you can do. Uh, one you can look into is, I think they're called daisy chains. They're basically like a carabiner that's made out of you know, the resistance band. Um, and so what you would do is you would hook that here to the band and then hook it to the bar. And so, you know, see that adds like a couple inches of space. So it reduces the tension, but if you're so big that you can't even get around your shoulders, you probably need to do that so that you can actually effectively do the workout. Uh, the other option is use the buddy program, right? Grab a buddy, grab your spouse, someone, have them, you know, get it, get it to here and then have them keep your hands in place with your elbows out have them pull it down around your back for you so you can kind of wiggle into, into spot. You know? So I know that's not ideal if uh, you don't really have anyone around, um, but it is an option. So uh, sorry I don't really have any other advice there because I've never really had to deal with that issue, but I understand it is a problem for a lot of people. Um, the daisy chains are probably your best bet if you are working out in an isolated area. Um, all right, that's good for band position. Now let's go into the actual motion. Uh, I'm going to walk through, this is the dark gray band here, so it's a good amount of tension for me. I am capable of doing more, um, but I still get a great amount of activation even with this quote lesser band than I would typically do. Um, so I'm going to do some from the front here. All right, you can see as I get ready, kind of take a deep breath. What I'm checking before I start is that the tension is even on both sides, so I, I kind of push both ways to see that it's nice and, and even because if it's crooked, you know, obviously one side is working harder than the other. Okay, I prep, make sure my hand position is solid, get my elbows flared out, and then I retract my scapula. Okay, and now I get just enough tension on the band so that I'm starting to feel the activation because you don't want to like jerk into the motion, you might hurt yourself. So I slightly push just enough to get the tension going so I can feel it and, and know what I'm up against. And then I start to expand from there. Okay, so when you get to the end, you can see my arms are wobbling, okay? That's what you want to see. That means you're pushing a good amount of tension that is difficult for you, but not so difficult you're gonna lose it, but uh, that also means you're not locking your elbows, okay? So if I were to lock my elbows, it kind of takes that away. You don't want to get to that point. I'll get to there, and slowly come back in. So as you can see, the range of motion for me right now isn't very huge because I'm stopped. It's still probably five inches away from my chest right now. If I come in about here, it's basically no tension. I'm, I'm basically relaxed. So what I typically do is I double wrap or use a, a band shortener on at least one of the sides so that my range of motion is tight from about here um, just so I get a slightly better level of fatigue. But just to demonstrate again from the side, okay, push out nice and controlled. Your wrist position is in line with your forearm, okay? Squeezing the bar inward, really pushing hard, not locking out, not letting the tension out. Okay. Okay, so I, I alluded to it, needing to shorten the side or two maybe. Um, you have to experiment for yourself here because everyone is so different in our sizes. Like I, I'm pretty thin, but I've got pretty lanky long arms for a guy my height. So it makes this movement a little bit different uh, compared to someone typically my height with shorter arms. So you need to um, experiment with adding a shortener, double wrapping one side or both sides um, if you're worried about the range of motion. Like I said, as you fatigue, you're still going to get quality uh, exercise on that diminished range because like as you tire, you know, I was showing it here that right now there's basically no tension on the, on the band, but when I get really tired, like this feels like I'm trying to push something that weighs like a thousand pounds. So 
it, you will get the work, um, but if you just want to get to that point quicker or really ensure you're, you're burning all ranges of, of motion there, just shorten a side, use a band shortener, whatever, whatever the method, um, that'll help you out a lot. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the fundamentals of the chest press. Um, just to recap real quick, elbow position, right? You've got to flare them out. Shoulders, you have to retract them. That helps isolate the chest and protect your shoulder joint so that you're not going to uh, you know, hurt yourself or force your arms to take the effort you want. Elbows and shoulders, okay? Your band position is key. It's got to be properly routed underneath your deltoid, above the tricep, kind of in that groove that forms there, and it needs to be straight across your back, okay? Uh, I highly recommend using a band sleeve or you know clips or something to keep it together. It just really eases getting into position properly for this. You know, if the bands start getting all crazy twisted in the back, it could cause an imbalance, makes it harder to keep it even. Um, it's, just, it's just too easy. It's like 10 bucks to go buy one of those things online. Um, if, if that's too much for you, I understand. You can use a sock, cut a tube sock, slide it over the band, that'll work too. Um, your grip squeeze is super key here. Right? You gotta grip this thing really hard with a proper wrist position. So my wrist is in line with the upper arm, it's not buckling. Squeeze inward as you push out very hard and that will really activate your chest. Okay. Um, and then the final piece to remember is not locking out as you extend and then don't let the band in so much that it loses tension. Okay, that's pretty much it. It's, it's relatively a simple exercise with X3. There's actually a lot less to memorize in terms of form. Um, really the biggest killer I think for most people is the elbows. As you tire, those elbows are gonna wanna come in. Your shoulders will get a little bit tired, so it's harder to keep them out. It's just natural that they're gonna wanna come in. So pay a lot of attention to your elbow position as you're pushing, because um, the second you bring them in, you're essentially turning it into a tricep press and that may be why you're feeling it in your arms. So, don't want to uh, you know, beat a dead horse here. That's pretty much it for the chest press. Um, the final thing I'll add really quickly here, I don't really want to do an in-depth guide on this because it's so easy, is the chest crossover, okay? So if for some reason you're just not feeling chest good enough and you want to hit it a little bit harder, you can take the band like this with your hands, okay? Put it behind your back, just like you would for the chest press, okay? and it routes right under where I said the chest press goes with the bar, the band needs to go right there uh, under your delt, okay? And you're not like curling it inwards, you have to like punch outward with your chest, okay? So like pretend you're punching someone with both hands simultaneously. You punch and cross, and then slowly let it back in. Don't do this because you're not doing anything. You gotta slowly extend it, Slowly let it back. Again, your elbows need to stay high. If they start coming in, you're basically just doing like a, I don't know, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> so you've got to keep the elbows out just like you did. And I alternate which hand goes on top just to keep it nice and balanced, okay? Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the chest crossover. Uh, I personally don't think this is necessary. I haven't done it now for I think five, four or five months. Um, I'm feeling plenty of chest activation by just using one band down. Uh, so I typically do dark gray and I double wrap it once or use a band shortener. Um, and I feel an, a, an incredible amount of activation in my chest. If that doesn't work for you or you don't want to mess around with uh, double wrapping or anything, grab a smaller band, the white or the light gray or even a lighter one if you need and do some of those crossovers immediately after you finish your chest. You should get a good amount of activation. The last little tip for everyone I will say is that uh, if you're using a smaller band right there's less area for the pressure to disperse around your arm so as you can see like my arms are getting a little red now and I did it on purpose so you can see where the band goes but um, a smaller band is going to be more uncomfortable because you're still putting a lot of tension around your arms but it's it's like a knife right it's it's a smaller area to disperse the tension so it's gonna start cutting into your skin quicker so if that's really uncomfortable for you, you need to like wear a sweatshirt or you know put something under your the band in between the band and your arm to cushion it. Um, 
because it can get pretty uncomfortable, right? So like, I much prefer to have the black band <laughs> around because it, it spreads the tension around your arm and it, it doesn't really make it uncomfortable. So um, I know that's a lot of issue for people, uh, you know, who aren't strong enough to use the bigger bands is it's very uncomfortable. So I highly recommend playing around with putting, you know, towels around it or something, get someone to help you, uh, you know, kind of cushion it or wear a really thick shirt or pad the arms of the shirt to, uh, you know, kind of alleviate that issue. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out anytime. If you have another method uh, that I, maybe I haven't demonstrated here that has helped you with your chest press, please explain it here or share even a video so other people can uh, benefit from your experience. And if you feel so inclined, feel free to subscribe. And I'll put a link also to uh, some of the other guide videos so you can kind of just keep diving in if, if you so choose. Thanks. And take